Yo. Yo. Yo, so um, it's Monday, March 28th, and, you know, if you haven't heard about this, I like Chris always said, you living under a rock, like, but, like, you dug, you dug a hole under that rock while you was there. That thing is, like, 80, 80 feet deep because there was a slap yesterday that was heard around the world that we're going to have to talk about because there's been so many different viewpoints on this. I want to know what y'all think because we all love comedy and we all have some serious situations in our lives that might make us think differently. March Madness, we have a set final four. Some brackets are clipped. I'm talking like all the way clipped. I'm not going to point finger that anybody in this bracket might be clipped, but you know, that person's bracket, I'm not pointing at that person right now. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm pointing at something in my room. Their, their bracket is clipped. Um, so we got to talk about that. And the NBA standings have been shaken up in a way that I don't think any of us pictured a month back. Not at all. People have never seen this. Welcome to the Radical Souls Podcast. I'm Daniel. I'm Chris. I'm Ethan. And if you haven't yet, please stop what you're doing and subscribe. Subscribe, watch the video, listen to our, our talk today. It's going to be a very interesting talk. I can tell you that right now. Um, and if you like it, like it. And if you want to share with other people you think will like it, share it. And then you go to our description, you click the link that's in there, and you go to the Radical Soul Show where you see Mr. Ethan buying sneakers. You see the whole process of the sneaker shows. <laughs> and Ethan's going to have some sneaker reviews because me and him have been getting our hands on a few things that we definitely need to show and talk about. Yes, sir. E, any news on anything coming up? Uh, no sneaker events at the moment. Um, after I'm done with these uh, taxes, because, you know, we're at LLC and we got to get things done, we'll be doing way more reviews during the week. Facts. So, yo, guys, with that being said, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Yo, first and foremost, let me start by saying that when Chris Rock goes back to Madison Square Garden, I'm going to need a standing ovation because he really ate that. I'm going to eat it. Ah! Yo, wait, wait, wait. What are you talking about? I didn't watch the Oscars last night because I'm half of America. You know, the Oscars are kind of irrelevant. What happened, bro? So what happened was <laughs> your boy Chris Rock is hosting. He out here making jokes on uh, Jada Pickett Smith, Will Smith's wife. Um, uh-huh. For people that don't know, she has the disease where you have hair loss, um, alopecia. Uh, alopecia, yeah. So, you know, she has her head shaved, you know, pretty, pretty. She's got a nice little low cut. But for, like, you know, the audience's sake, she chose to chop her hair off. Yeah. yeah. Like, she was losing hair, you know, which my, my wife explained this to me uh, quite well after, you know, the event. She says supposedly that that happens to a lot of girls and that a lot of girls tend to just be losing hair at a certain point in their life, especially like at her age that, you know, they just lose hair that it thins out, but not per se, like she's losing her hair, like a cancer patient where it's like coming out in chunks. So when people say like, she's losing hair, you're thinking that you think, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. like she, she has something really bad and you know, half of her hair is coming out. No, she just chose to not deal with the, you know, sweeping the floor every day. And, you know, using a little vacuum every day to around her house or whoever, you know, whoever does that for her. So it's just a loss of hair. It's not like chunks of her hair coming out. And she chose to zip it off, you know. Thank you for, for clarifying that part, because if I didn't add that part, that, that's, that was not that was going to change everything a lot more. But um, so, yeah. Chris Rock makes a joke, calls her G.I. Jane. For people that don't know, it's a, a movie from like the 19, 1997 where it's an army who's a woman who just shaves her head. And, um, you know, Chris Rock was out here talking about, oh, you know, uh, Jada. Can't wait to see G.I. Jane, too. All right, cool. Everybody's laughing. Will Smith gets a nice little laugh. He looks at Shorty, and Shorty has that face of, you know what I find funny? And that's when Will Smith decided to take things into his own hands. He gets mm-hmm. up and walks to the front. Everybody's like, oh, this, this must be part of the show. And homie says, mm! Open hand just slaps the hell out of Chris Rock. Even to the point that Chris Rock himself said, yo, he slapped the shit out of me. And <laughs> yo, um, he starts bugging out. He's sitting there talking about leave my wife's name out your effing mouth. 
And he said, bro, it was a G.I. James joke. And he said it again for the people in the back. He said it louder, prouder, and with his chest. Leave my wife's name out your effing mouth. And then he said, all right, bro. And, you know, do you, do you, I mean, obviously, let's add on to the, the prize timeline. So, over the last few years, maybe like the last two, I don't know. I, I feel like these two talk every other month, so I don't even know anymore how long it's been. Uh, Will Smith and Jada Pickett Smith seemed like they had a great relationship, and uh, they decided to have a sit-down talk after there was rumors that she was out here um, having an affair with somebody. And Mr. Uh, August Decina, whatever the hell his name is. Yeah, and then um, they had a nice little <coughs> table talk in one of her shows where she admitted that they did. Will Smith comes out and says, we weren't dating at that time, so I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, aren't y'all married? How, what you mean I wasn't? Yeah, what you mean I wasn't uh, dating? So then you have her out here talking about Tupac, how much she loved Tupac, yada, yada, yada. That was another weird thing I never looked into. I was like, yo, why are we talking about the dead, bro? Can we just respect this dead man, please? And then back in 2016, where this kind of, I don't know if this started per se, because if this is how it started, they are soft. I'm sorry. Um, remember at that time, they were kind of boycott a lot of the, like the Oscars, the Grammys, and all those award shows because, you know, African Americans felt like it was very whitewashed and they weren't getting the same representation or being taken care of the same way. And they kind of wanted to start their own sh- award shows for African Americans. And Jada Pickersmith Smith decided not to go on Will Smith. Chris Rock made a joke saying, I don't know what she's talking about. She didn't want to come, which honestly, she wasn't invited. Like, that's like me saying, um, I'm not going to go to Rihanna's panties. I wasn't invited. <laughs> <laughs> and then he made a joke about Will Smith talking about how, um, you know, it wasn't fair that he got paid 20 mil to be uh, in that movie. So if that's where it started, I don't know. If it did start there, they saw. But... Let me get y'all takes on the whole situation because we have a lot of different views out there on uh, who was in the right, who was in the wrong, if anybody was in the wrong, if anybody was in the right. So I don't know who wants to start this off. Chris? I don't know. I guess I'll go. Uh, I feel like I kind of under, like, I feel like every man kind of understands Will Smith to a certain extent. Maybe he was upset. I'm sure he's tired of hearing people come for his wife. I'm sure he's tired of hearing people come for him. So I kind of get it. You know, I kind of, I like, you know, you can understand where the rage came out of. Because, yo, it's been months of, like, people just coming for them left and right. And they've been the butt of, like, people's jokes left and right. Like, you know, and, and, you know, it comes to a certain point where he said it. He was like, you know, you're supposed to, in this industry, you know, people would just you know, say jokes about you and you're supposed to laugh about it. So I get it. But, but, but a big but is that like this Oscars had to be, and I don't know if y'all watched the whole thing. I did. I watched like maybe up until like 10 o'clock. This is like the first time I've watched the Oscars and I haven't been born out of my mind. Like there was brown people everywhere. There was good music. There was Spanish. like Spanish hosts, black hosts. Like they had... They just had a people in was, wheelchairs, they, people deaf. They were doing sign language. Like they were, they were had to everybody. Be, they had to be the most like diverse Oscar show I've seen of all time of, of my short twenty six years of life. That had to be like the best Oscars. So it's like, all right, you wrap that up, and you're like, all right, this is like one of the most diverse Oscars I've not seen ever. They even had a choir out there. You know, when the the the, the actors die, that they like pay respects to them. They had a whole gospel choir at the end, like, ah, like that kind of diverse. Like, it was a, a very great show. And then you come and you turn around and you got Will Smith slapping the shit out of Chris Rock. So you're going to tie those two together. You're, like, forever going to tie those two together. So at, in, in one space, they did well. And then Will Smith comes out of nowhere and it's like, shit, like, that's how you're going to represent your people. Like, on a stage like this where you're sitting front row. So it looks bad on him. You know, it looks bad on, like, the part of, you know, fitting a certain stereotype that, you know, us as like colored men can't control ourselves. Like, you know, you fit, you're, he's fitting into the stereotype that they want him to fit in. So hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully the media doesn't take it that way, but let's see. I don't know. How do you guys feel about it? Uh, if you guys disagree with me, please let me know. 
I mean, going off what you just said, like Stephen A. Smith kept like ranting about that this morning. Like, why did he do it for the Oscars? Like, take it backstage, or like this is something you should not be proud to do, like attacking each other. So I definitely uh, agree with that, Chris. Um, yeah. It was so, it's hard because like they're both in the right and the wrong. Because like Will is yeah. in his wife and Chris is simply making a joke, which he's known to do. So like yeah. they're both not in the, the wrong to do that. And like, like, isn't that the the, the the isn't that the like job of a host to make everything lighthearted? point out the obvious like i don't know at the end like when i like when you start digging into the jokes a little deeper i saw i don't know what her name is uh amy schumer how she came and like stood up the guy's wife and was like oh this is a a a fill-in seater i'm gonna sit down next to you like hey what's up like all right if you look into that you pretty much just call his wife ugly as fuck and that you know what's up like i'm gonna holler at you right in front of you like if you really look into it like that then you know she should get slapped per se but, like, they're just jokes. Like, these are what hosts do. Like, that's another thing you have to play into account, too. Like, all right, I understand you're fed up, but these are just their jobs to make the the the, the scene lighthearted. I guess, like, the only argument I've had against Chris Rock is maybe don't attack her over, like, her disease. Because, you know, some people might take it the wrong way, especially because we all have yeah. family members that have something. So I, I know I'm talking from experience. There was one time that somebody said something about a family member, and I got really upset. And, you know, obviously, um, some people take it differently. You feel me? Like, I get it. It's jokes. But maybe he could have attacked them a different way. So that's the only reason I'm going to blame Chris Rock a little bit in that sense. Yeah. Other than that, he handled everything correctly because he could have easily just, oh, you want to slap me? All right, yo, eat this. Mm, just hit him with a closed hand to the back of his head. Facts. Let the, let the Tims come out for like 10 seconds. But, you know, Chris Rock handled that very well. Um, Will Smith, again, he was protecting his wife. You know, he didn't like the jokes. He's tired of it, like you said, Chris. But like he said, like, and even you, Chris, like, there's a certain way to handle certain things. And it's like, yo, you're going to do this on the Oscars, the national stage where everybody's tuning in. Everybody's going to see clips. Everybody's going to see different things on social media. And you slapped them and bugged out. And I think the only thing that saved them was people so confused on if it was, like, real or if it was staged. Yeah. Facts. Because, I mean, you couldn't, like, there was no way that, like, if you told me that was a prop or part of the part of the show, I would have been like, all right, you know, that, that was kind of funny, blah, blah, blah. Like, maybe he's trying to send a, a, little me- a little message to everybody. But, like, I think it's the fact that Chris Rock, like, was able to keep his composure, which made that situation, like, 20 times better. Yeah, because if he would have blacked out, that, that would have been an ugly scene, bro. Facts. I'll let you go into my this question at the end because I have a very good question I thought of last night. I want your opinion on this. But, um, the thing is, he called himself. Because, like, after he said that, he said, I could have, but then stopped. Like, immediately just stopped. Because I, I think he could have violated I can't. I think he had more jokes in hand, but he was like, let me just go with this. Like, I, I yeah. think he could have really made it worse. Facts. Yo, that dude probably thought of 50 jokes and, like, three different left and right hook combinations at that exact moment, in all honesty. Yeah. So the question I have for you guys, I thought about this last night. What would have happened if we replaced Will Smith with Kanye West? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. What would have been the, America's reaction today? I don't think you could cancel Kanye West anymore that he's been canceled. So, like... I felt like it, it would have just been bad. <laughs> I think it would have been like not again. Like yeah, like, like not like. It would have been like uh, Kanye again, really. So why why are we inviting this guy places? <laughs> <laughs> I only thought about that because they didn't invite him to the to the. It was the Grammys, right? They said not gonna invite him to. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, what would have happened like if this was Kanye West? Because everybody's like taking this. I'm not gonna say but they're taking it light, but. If it was Kanye West, yo, social media would have been in shambles, bro. They would have been all in for that dude to get arrested. He probably would have gotten arrested <laughs> at that exact moment that he let the slap off. So, like, now, to like, to follow up on that, like, how do you think you guys, how do you think Will Smith's going to be perceived now? You know how he's, like, a happy-go-friendly, like, 
like star like how you see him and like you, you he's a, like an approachable person per se and like he's like people see him as that like not dad figure but like an uncle figure like all right you know he's cool he's a cool star like do you think he's still going to be perceived like that i say yeah i think because like he's still a father figure like you said so that that would never change and like what he did was for his family it's not like he did it randomly out of nowhere um and then with the speech after everybody loved him for that speech so like it's hard to say yeah yeah. I don't know. I'm a little stuck because we're in a weird time of cancel culture now and a lot of following where, let's say, for example, one director goes, you know what? I don't want somebody that's that violent who publicly slaps somebody. I don't know what type of um, take this might have on the movie. I'm not going to hire him for this movie. And we're in a, st- in a time where people follow. Like, we've seen it with every – and so many different industries where people are like, oh, well – that person can't do that, so I'm going to follow. I'm going to follow. I'm a, so I'm curious to see, like, what's going to happen. I don't think he's going to get that much backlash, but in a time, in the day and age today, like, I'm, I'm only mentioning it because I'm not surprised if it happens in a few days. When we start seeing mm-hmm. trying to cancel him. And same thing with Chris Rock. I mean, everybody's trying to cancel every comedian for every joke, so wouldn't be surprised if they try to cancel Chris Rock over a joke over some of the you with alopecia. So, yeah. No, it's probably true. I mean, I guess, I guess but, like, I guess they're both wrong, but I don't know. I feel like it's going to be rough for Chris Rock to get back on that stage or he has to come out and say something soon because he hasn't said anything, right? No. Nah. No. Nah. Most that's happened is he hasn't pressed charges, which he could have, but. I don't think he had them. I doubt he will. I mean, he has some time to do it, but. Yeah, I doubt it. Can I say one last thing before we go? Yeah. Of um, I feel like Chris Rock and like that generation, he listened to Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor. And, like, those type of jokes, like, he's used to. But, like, yeah. most of is, like, an actor. Like, he's, he's he's a comedian, but he's not, like, stand-up Hardcore. comedian. Yeah. Like, Chris yeah. Rock. I feel like it's different for, like, both natures. That is true. That, that's a good, like, that's a good perspective because he is definitely one of, like, those last comics that are just raunchy and, like, very, out, like, just outspoken in general in the way they say jokes and, you know, the level to where they take their jokes and, you know. So that is, that is true. He, you know, I wonder, is any of this shit like scripted? Like when they go up there and say jokes, like, do you think like the Academy has to like, okay, these jokes? I think from now and like here going out, like, oh, no, nah, yeah, to- from here going out, they're gonna be like, yo, please send me a list of every and any possible joke that might come out of your mouth. And if you go off script, we're not bringing you back. Yeah, like, I, I think you, you got to, from here on out, it's gonna be like that. I mean, Watch I know they do, re- they do rehearsals and they said that Will Smith wasn't at rehearsal. So mm-hmm. this clearly wasn't uh, uh, the Will Smith yeah. slapping part was the stage. Maybe the joke was like, <coughs> set up already. But if it, yeah. if it was set up, like you're saying, then I mean, I, I'm not going to blame Chris Rock for anything because any, nobody sat there and said, yo, maybe, hmm. uh, you know, her having alopecia, maybe we shouldn't let that one slide. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, uh, as the host, like Amy, like, she said a joke, like, oh, three women were cheaper than one man as a host. Yeah. I don't yeah. think the Academy was like, why the fuck you said that? Like, stuff like that was probably just off the top of the head. That facts. was hilarious. I'm not even going to lie. That was straight <laughs> facts, too. But we're going to have to see what happens. We're definitely going to be uh, keeping an eye on that and seeing what the repercussions are for both parties in this. Gosh, gosh. And to correct myself... Because I guess Tia heard me. I guess there is uh, like different parts of alopecia, and like that yeah, there like can the there can be, yeah, that there can be people that have alopecia that chunks fall out. So if you heard me before, maybe her, me. yeah, like you know, there's different levels of that for you. I, I, yeah, I mean, different levels. Please don't cancel Chris, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I guess Please that. don't. It happens, bro. Trust me. Like, there's different levels to everything. And, you know, sometimes some people just at the beginning just go, yo, F it. It's going to get to this point anyways. Let me just start early. Yeah. So, but that's crazy, though. That's crazy, though. Chris Rock, I slap. Yo, we <laughs> sat. I, I know, I know, like, just like 20,000 other people in America, yo, we sat on our couch and we're like, yo. It just looked at each other and we're like, yo, did that just happen? Like, I mean, the first thing that came into my head, like I said, when I saw it on social media was Rick Rock. I'm going to eat it. Ah! 
<laughs> they really ate that slap, bro. Like, he really ate that. Like, I was proud. I was like, yo, he needs to stay in ovation at MSG. I don't yo. care. He ate that. I, I I think, like, yo, that just shows, like, the type of, like, show business, like, level-headedness that he has. Because anybody else gets slapped that hard in front of that many people, yo. I don't think their hands are still behind their back, bro. bro. Like, you see him the whole time. He just, like, and then he puts his hands right behind his back. And I was like, wow, that's, that's crazy. So. Will Smith got lucky. Let me just put it like that. Because. Yeah. He slapped Kanye like that. I don't know what would have happened. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right, but let, let's let's get into basketball, guys. Yeah, I mean, how, I mean, how are you guys' brackets doing? Well, you know, we're gonna have two coaches that might slap each other, like Chris Rock <laughs> and Will Smith matching up in the Final Four between um, Duke and North Carolina. First time they'll ever see each other in the NCAA tournament. I didn't believe that's that at all. Um, let me take a look at the brackets. I, I want y'all opinions on uh, the Final Four real quick. While I take pull this up real quick. <laughs> Talk about you sure? I mean, we, we can talk about it because I'm, I'm a good state. <laughs> so, in first place, we got D Alba. Uh, the max points I can get is 100 and 1,190. I'm at 710 right now. I had chose Villanova and Kansas to meet up in the final four. I did not get the other half, though, of the bracket because, again, I didn't believe in Duke at all. Um, second place, we got Joel, who's at 1090. Chris is at third with 1070 max points. And then after that, it's like Ethan with a max of like 780. The Zaga boys failed me. Bro, we try to tell you. I don't know why Yo. Zaga. Yeah, you wasn't here on Friday. We try to tell you about Zaga, and you, you ain't. I should have. I should listen. Zaga boys is not it. I mean, in your defense, I, we didn't think Duke was going to be it either. And somehow, some way, yeah. we've just been able to turn it around. And let me ask you, do you guys think Duke is going to beat North Carolina? Do you think they get the revenge of North Carolina? Is like, yeah, we've been there, done that. We got this. <laughs> no you got Duke? <laughs> so you got North Carolina? North Carolina, yeah, yeah, I got North Carolina. My bad. You like cut out when they ask the question. But yeah, North high. Carolina, North Carolina, Villanova, Villanova. What's, <laughs> what's your reasoning behind North Carolina? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I just feel like they found the temple. They they got. I don't know. They they looked. I don't know. Maybe because they were playing St. Peter's. I don't know, but yo, they looked elite last night. Like. They look like St. Peter. Like who they they made St. Peter's look like they were who they were a 15 seed from a no name school in New Jersey. <laughs> like, and I don't know. And they made Baylor look like that. And I had Baylor going to the championship. Like, I had Baylor going. I thought it was going to be Baylor Villanova, and I thought it was going to be a close game. And they made Baylor. I mean, the Baylor stuck around, but not really. Like they they had Baylor in their pocket the whole game. So. And I mean, in that first round, I don't know who they played. Um, it was. Oh, I can go back and look. Marquette, and then they played Baylor. <clears throat> and that's when they beat Marquette by thirty-two. And look at that, they beat Marquette by thirty-two. And Marquette is, you know, Marquette's decent. I mean, yeah, they're historically decent team that usually makes it out the first round for the most part, depending. First. On the first. Yeah. So, no. Nah. You know, and and I mean. Let's see. Duke let Michigan State kind of stay around. You know, Egg. Duke. Duke barely. I wouldn't say they barely, but they, you know, they. Oh, no. That, that game was close with Texas Tech to the very end until, like, yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I, I, I got UNC. Peter, who you got? I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to say Duke. I'm say Duke got this. Mm. Then again, I got Zaga winning it all, so I'm not much viable. Um, but I have more faith in Duke if I had a bet on one. And uh, Villanova, Kansas? Nova. Yeah, Nova's going to take that. Uh, so I got Nova. Um, Kansas, I'm not really too crazy about just because, I don't know, Kansas is just a weird team, bro. Like, I'm surprised they even made it this far. Even though I picked them to make it this far, like seeing it, I'm like, yo, I can't believe they really made it this far. Um, and I don't know, man. Duke, North Carolina. 
It's Who become said, like a classic matchup, bro. It's the only thing that makes this decision hard for me is the Coach K factor. It's Coach K's last season. Are they going to be able to pull it off for him? And you know, I've been saying this every episode or every time we talk about this. I thought they were going to crack under that pressure of this is Coach K's last run. But North Carolina did beat them last time. And I hate Duke, so I'm going to have to go with North Carolina. <laughs> so, North Carolina, Nova. Nova wins it all at the end of it all. Yeah. All right. So, that's going to be April 2nd. Yeah. So, we'll be here talking about it Monday of next week. Sure? And most of these kids right now are playing to get into the NBA. And some of these kids might be the deciding factors on some of these teams of what happens next season. And let me tell you, next season should be insane because right this season is <laughs> lining things up to be wild next year. We're going to have to pull up these standings real quick because, listen, when me, Ethan, and Chris are talking about this back in January, February, I don't think any of us envisioned the standings being where they are right now, like at all. It's... It's been crazy, man. The Hornets beat the Nets last night. The Nets dropped to ninth place. The Lakers lost. The Lakers are in 10th. And they're like one game ahead of the Spurs. They might not even make the play-in right now. All right, here we go. Back. Celtics are first. Bro, Celtics are in first. Miami's in second. Tied for first because they got the same record. But because of the um, – I just had a brain fart right now. Tiebreakers. They're ahead of Miami. Milwaukee's a half game behind. The Sixers are a half game behind. The Bulls only three and a half games behind. The Raptors are a six, which is very crucial right now for Brooklyn because if Brooklyn somehow gets into the eighth seed again, they won't have to play the Raptors without Kyrie because Kyrie cannot play in Toronto because he is unvaccinated, which he played last night. But, you know, that's a discussion for another time. Because uh, me and Chris had talked about it, and I said it's kind of hypocritical if he plays because he said he was not going to play because of the voiceless, and the voiceless yes. will have to get vaccinated to work. So I don't know. That, that seems kind of odd to me. But anyways, Cleveland's in seventh right now, even though they were like in fourth not too long ago. The Hornets are in eighth. Brooklyn's in ninth. A game and a half behind of the Hawks, and the Knicks are still not mathematically eliminated, even though <laughs> they are out of this because there's only seven games left. And unless somebody goes 0-7, and the Knicks win some <laughs> It ain't happening. What's going on in the East? Who wants to start? Where do we begin? I don't even know what to talk. We got like nine minutes, so we're going to have to just. Who's the favorite? Let's, let's start with that. Who's the favorite? Mm-hmm. I still got 76ers. I'm sorry to say. I, I still got it. Milwaukee. I, I, I think it's going to be Milwaukee, bro. I seriously think Milwaukee's going to pull it off you. I'm not a believer. I can't see it. I can't see him winning another chip. Not so soon. Oh, no. He's not going to win the chip, but they're going to make it to the finals. I think a team in the West is going to win this year. I don't think (laughs) anybody in the East. I don't think they can handle Bulls, 76ers, Heat, or Celtics. I'm not crazy about the Bulls, honestly. You don't think they can handle the Bulls? Hey. Right now, they're doing bad. But I think when Lonzo comes back, they're going to get clicking. Okay. Yeah, they're definitely missing yeah. out. The Celtics, I mean, are we believers in this? Or is this kind of just got hot at the right time and they're going to do the Celtic usual of choking in the second round? I'm going to go with that, the latter. The choking in the second round. Because I, I am not a believer in the Celtics at all. So, I mean, if they play book in the first round, they, they might be done. Then again, that defense is crazy. The Nets don't play any defense, so I don't know. Do you see the Knicks as a different type of contender now? Do you feel like it's a a bit of an easier road if they pop into the 7 or 8? I think the Nets, if they come in 7th, might struggle with Miami. I think Miami's just having a really rough time right now. Mm -hmm. And because the Nets don't really match up well with Miami, I think they could lose to Miami. The Celtics, that's another questionable matchup. I like the Nets more in that matchup than the Celtics, but you never know. I mean, even then, like, you got to look at the playing because it's like, yo, if they play the Hornets, they just lost right now, even though the Hornets are soft. 
If they play Cleveland, I don't even know if I like them against Cleveland, even though Cleveland's young because they just got bigs everywhere, and I don't know if they match up well. The Hawks, I mean, they, the Nets play no defense. Trey Young goes off at 50, and you get a 30-piece from Bogdanovich. You're losing the game. Thanks. I'm, I'm not crazy about Brooklyn. I'm, I, I mean, Brooklyn's going to pull it off, of course, because KD, Kyrie, but it's just going to be, I think, a grueling, grueling way to get into the playoffs, and they're going to get drained out because I think it's already happening to some people like Patty Mills, who wasn't supposed to start and now had to because of Kyrie, and he looks burnt out. So I don't know if you guys agree with that or – I agree. I agree. I concur. I hope we see a seven-game series of 76s and Nets. That's all I hope for. Just first round, second round. I just that would be nice. That would be entertaining. That would be very entertaining. And it's crazy how, like, you go from east to west and just look at the standings from east to west. Just do a quick, like, flop, flop. Like, flop, and then now go back up. Now go back up. Look at those, like, six teams. Don't even look who they are. Okay, now go back down. <laughs> Yeah, the West is winning. It doesn't matter who's like. It doesn't matter who's like who, who's who's coming out of the East. The West is winning. So, who are y'all believing in the, the West? I got the Suns, but yeah, son, I got the Warriors. I got, I got Nuggets. Nuggets. Jamal Murray and PJ back. Did they come at the right time. They got Nuggets. Okay. I can't get- believe the Lakers are still in with thirty-one wins. Listen. They're a game behind. They're a game ahead of the Spurs, bro. If they fall out of this play in, this is gonna be the craziest joke in the. Can you believe in the beginning of the year when we were texting each other, we were all like, "Yo, I mean, granted, I'm, I'm a Mellow fan. I wanted the Lakers to win for Mellow, but I really believe the Lakers could pull it off." And here I am looking at this like, "Wow, they have a worse record than the Knicks." Facts. And they're a half game out of ninth, and I, I don't even know if I like them against the Timberwolves or Clippers if they make it. I don't. <laughs> I mean, I wonder what do they do after this? Do they just like they're stuck? I think they are. I they got know. no first round picks until twenty twenty seven. Russell Westbrook's gonna be making like forty mil, and that type of contract you have to attach a, a pick. I don't think anybody's gonna want a second round pick unless it's like a second round pick in a few years where it could be a high. Second round pick, so it's kind of like a first round pick in a sense. But unless you're going to trade Glassman Anthony Davis, but I don't think anybody's really going to want him, and you're not going to get true value for him. Or maybe you come to a, a talk with LeBron and be like, yo, bro, we need to sign and trade you. Like, this is going to help you. This is going to help us. You don't even want to be here. You want to go play with Brody. Like, that's. Yeah. That's the only way I see it, like an unexpected, like LeBron sign in trade or trade. Yeah. Facts. Let's see. I don't think there's any other pieces that could really trade on that team besides like Malik Monk, who's been playing very well this year. But again, some people might look at that as you're playing with LeBron. I'm not taking that chance. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So is it safe to say we, we touched on this a little bit last week, but Russell Westbrook was a was a dub. Yeah, that – um. I mean, he's been playing a little bit better as of late, but I think it's just the fit, man. I think he's got to go to a different team. I don't know what team, but yeah. he's going to have to figure this out ASAP because if he does not figure it out next season, he's going to get blackballed and not be in the league anymore. Yeah. Lakers really – go ahead. Are the Knicks looking for a point guard? No. <laughs> like I said, bro, like that's like last resort, like option Z, bro. Nah, I feel like what, what, what messed up the Lakers was like just the mismanagement in the front office, bro. The, the getting rid of that all star roster they had 2019, you know, and then dispersing of everything. Like, I don't know. The Anthony, um, tra- the Anthony Davis trade killed them. They literally do what the Knicks did with Melo. They could have waited a half season, he wasn't going anywhere else. You keep all your pieces in Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, and – Maybe you, couldn't even keep Randall. Like, yeah, like if you want to look back even further, Randall, Jordan Clarkson, D'Angelo Russell, like they've had so many young pieces and they just let – Just mismanaged. Traded a lot of them before they should have and got LeBron and traded the rest. Facts. But, yo, two minutes left. 
we're going to have to wrap it up there. Let me just ask you one quick question. Chris, you said Suns E. Who's your pick in the West real quick? I still got Nuggets. But, but, hear me out. I think Grizzlies are going to make it far. All right, because I know you said Nuggets. I wanted to hear your reasoning. I want to see your second team. I got the Warriors. I'm sorry. I don't see nobody being the Warriors in the West. They got experience. It is what it is. <laughs> but, be back Friday, guys. Hope you have a great week. We'll be talking in the back channels, seeing what the hell's going on this week. Right, don't go out there. Don't go slapping nobody. Just peace and love, all right? <laughs> peace. <laughs>